dressed and it was like a house and I was like, oh shit, so they recording in a house. All right, so I'm chilling outside for about 10, 15 minutes. Next thing I know, I see a damn big ass, like dark green, money green type Escalade pull up on like 26s. You know what I mean? I was like, okay, who this nigga right here is? And like two niggas in the front that with the driver and a nigga in the front seat, which is Ray, which I, you know, I got stories about Ray, but Ray was a good dude. He was a good business dude, you know what I mean? So shout out to Ray for damn being a real nigga from Memphis that fuck with Pat Tough. So they jump out the car and I was like, yo, none of them niggas look like Project Pat. And then next thing I know, out the back seat, there go Project Pat jumping out. A nigga like about 6'6". Six, six. You know what I mean? I'm a tall, I ain't no short nigga myself. I'm like 6'2", six, 6'2 two, six, two and a half. I like to say 6'3 on a good day. But that nigga was out and I was like, yo, that's real Pat. That's like Memphis legend, 3'6 Mafia, Juicy J brother legendary artists like shit Drake didn't bite from you know what I mean Drake daddy from Memphis I don't know if a lot of y'all know that but Drake pops from Memphis that's why they always fuck with 3-6 Mafia and Project Pat them tough so anyway man we get out the whip we chop it up we talking you know what I mean talking and chilling you know I already rolled me like two blunts just in case he wanted to smoke but the nigga didn't want to smoke or nothing he just said yo the studio in the back of the house so the studio was set up like a, a outhouse separate from the house a spade spade haze and that shit was nice it was a real nice setup real good quality mics good boardroom you know what i mean the shit was nice so we go in there we start talking about you know where i'm from you know representing sandy island telling them where i grew up at telling them this and that he telling me about shit he used to do in south carolina how he used to be going through charleston doing this thing you know running packages from them up to Memphis, down here to the damn Carolina, getting the bag. And we just chopping it up. Now, like some real good fellas chopping it up. He drinking on a little bit of something. I'm burning my L, but he ain't want to smoke. He said he want to stay focused. So my verse and my chorus was already laid, and the internet is playing that shit over and over again, loud, loud. So while he talking to me, he said, yo, I'm about to start focusing on his verse. So he just started writing his shit right there, man, right in front of me, like, while, I'm, while my shit playing, he just going back and forth and saying, yo, I liking this, I'ma say this, I'ma say some shit like this. He said, how you liking this? He'd say four bars, I say, yo, that shit hard. Then he'd say another four bars. And I'm like, oh shit, you killing it. Then he said another four bars, and I'm like, yes, he giving me that real pat tar. He ain't giving me no damn rush verse and no bullshit. So that shit came out excellent, man. That shit was dope as fuck. And he went in the booth and laid that shit, man. It probably took him like three tries, you know what I mean? But he laid that shit straight. I said no longer than 30 minutes, 30 or 40 minutes from start to finish. He killed that shit. And I was like, yo, that's what's up. Pat gave me some real shit and this shit fire. You know what I mean? The shit was fire. So after we played this shit a couple of times, this is shit, bump the shit. A couple real OGs from Virginia pulled up that new Dan Spade Hayes. And niggas been taking pictures with Pat outside talking about old war stories, about hustling, about prison time, real nigga shit. And I just been sitting there just chilling, chopping it up with them, playing my position, not being too up, not being too loud, but just being me, you know what I mean? Cool as a fan and relatable all fucking day. And that's how that shit went down, you know what I mean? That shit was cool, we bumping the track, vibing with everybody, politicking. And shit, after everything was done, we was like, yo, this track banging. And he was like, yo, you wanna do the video, man? We should do the video to this shit right now, bird. And I was like, you serious? And I said, you just dropped that shit. How you gonna remember that shit? He said, man, I got that shit in my head already. I'm ready, bro, let's go. So then I told Cheese, I went to Cheese and said, yo, grab that camera out the fucking trunk, man. I know I ain't bring my real cameraman. I brought a video guy, but yo, we about to pull this shit off and you about to film this shit for me, my nigga. And Cheese was like, I don't know, man. I kind of kind of shook, you know, he back and kind of nervous, kind of starstruck, but I know Cheese been around other celebrities before because you know, Cheese brother real cool with the outlaws and Young Noble and all that shit. They used to come down to the Carolina all the time. You know, them niggas been real down to earth. So I know Cheese been around real made niggas because the outlaws, back in the day were the truth they were part of pop and that shit legendary in itself so after we finished doing the video and shit you know in virginia and chesapeake 
My cousin Cheese finished doing all the filming. We checking the footage, make sure everything is all right. We got what we need. And then me and Pat start talking about shows. I start talking about, you know, like doing some shit with him when he goes on the road. And he was very receptive to that shit. So I got a couple of shows with him around that same time. You know what I mean? Got to open up for them, open up for him and Juicy J a couple times. And we also chopped it up about Young Dolph. Cause Young Dolph at that time was like one of my favorite, favorite artists. Like one of my favorite artists. I was really fucking with Dolph, presence, style, voice, everything about him, you know what I mean? So when I talked to him about Dolph, Pat was like, oh shit, man, Dolph, that's the homie, man. You know what I mean? He like family. I fuck with him. He fuck with me. And I was like, word? And I was like, yeah, man. Like, he said, yeah, man, damn, Dolph is like, that. that's our guy, like, he always fucked with me and Juicy coming up, especially him and Juicy did a lot of features together back in the day. So I was like, word, word. And I was like, yo, it would be a, yo, I want to get a record with you and Dolph on that shit. And he was like, man, I already got a record with Dolph that's booming right now on the streets. It's on the Street God mixtape. And I was like, word. And he was like, yeah, man, shit, I can get Dolph on the line right now. And he, he called him. He hit up his phone and was talking business with him and told him, you know what I mean, that he probably was gonna do a remix to that song they had. And Dolph was like, cool, you know what I mean? Just let me know who the artist is, you know what I mean? If, if he down with you, it's all good. And he was like, all right, I'm gonna get back with you about that. So he hung up the phone and then he started talking to me like, yo, you know the same way we remixed this Green Crack song? We can remix that song I got with Dolph called I Got Strong. You know what I mean? I said, word? And he was like, yeah, man. But just for that record, you just throw me a little something. Give me a little something on it. You know what I mean? And we could definitely have that for you. Get it chopped up by the engineer so you could just have the chorus and my verse and you could drop your verse and have the... So I was like, word. I'm down with that, bro. Let's do it. Let's do it. I got you. Gave him what the fuck he needed. 